Once we were many. Now we are few. Hunters. Killers of the world's filth. Witchers. The ultimate killing machines. Among us, a legend. The one they call Geralt of Rivia. Over the course of the last century, one by one the witcher schools were attacked, leaving the once proud fortresses as little more than abandoned ruins. Mages, peasants and priests all played their role in the downfall of the witchers. Each attack left the witcher school unable to continue, except the school of the wolf. The fortress of Kaer Morhen and the wolf school located within its walls have survived the initial assault to the point they were able to continue what they were doing almost right after being attacked. But the same fate as the other schools would eventually befall them. In this video, I want to go over the downfall of the School of the Wolf. The Wolf School started out as the leftovers of the Witcher Order. The last few Witchers that remained before the Order fully disbanded. They founded their school in Kaer Morhen hidden in the Blue Mountains of Catwin, far away from civilization and people. The witches from the school were what you would expect witches to be. Monster slayers working for coin. They might not have been as noble and virtuous as griffins, but they certainly did have a code they followed. If all the witch schools had been similar to the wolves, the witches might never have fallen as it was due to the actions of the Cat and Viper schools and their work as assassins that distrust of witches grew. A distrust which priests sought to exploit to gain more influence by giving common folk an enemy to blame things on. The mages also had their own agendas. The witchers guarded their secrets pretty well as to how they were created and what the precise ingredients were. Each school had their own mages, who were forbidden to share anything they knew about the trials of the grasses. But even then, some secrets were kept even from the mages, as to make sure nothing got out. It was this secrecy that drove mages to bring down an avalanche on the school of the griffin. And in a similar way, it was the secrecy and the need to blame someone that drove a few mages to lead a peasant mob against the witchers of Kaer Morhen. In the books we are told that 50 years before the birth of Triss Marigold, a group of mages led peasants in an attack against Kaer Morhen. This event took place somewhere around 1170 and the consequences would be felt for a long time. Bones scattered throughout the area of Kaer Morhen. Bones of both peasants and fallen witchers. They served as a reminder that people can't always fully be trusted, and even if you try to protect them, they might come to your home to harm you. Kaer Morhen's secret location should have been more efficient at keeping angry mobs at their distance, which brings up the question as to how they knew where the keep was located. And well, we kind of get an answer to this question in Witcher 3. There is a very small side quest in Kaer Morhen, where you have to activate three stones which act as a kind of greenhouse to allow special plants to grow nearby. This was an invention of a mage named Hieronymus, who was the resident mage of Kaer Morhen around the time when the keep was attacked. At the end of the side quest you can find a note written by Hieronymus, which he was corresponding with a female sorceress named Lesbeth about his special garden, even saying how he might invite her over to show her how he had done so. It seems likely that this is how the mages knew where to find the witch's keep and how to lead the peasants there. The attack left many dead, including all of the witchers who were present at the time in Kaer Morhen, as well as the mages who were stationed there. Vesemir the beloved elderly wolf witcher survived, although depending on the books of games, it changes whether or not he was present during the attack or not. In the aftermath of the attack, it was Vesemir who became the most prominent witcher of the school. 
he led the attempt to rebuild the school, to train new witchers. And train new witchers they did. Amongst the witchers who arrived at Kaer Morhen in the decades after the attacks were Geralt of Rivia, Eskol, and eventually Lambert. They were some of the most notable witchers the school had ever seen. But for every few witchers that left the keep each year to slay monsters, there were also a few children who weren't so lucky. Witchers are trained to be able to deal with seeing a lot of death. But seeing children die, over and over, due to failing mutations, hearing them scream in pain, it became too much. Should witchers even be made if so many innocent children had to perish before one can be created? It was that question that seemed to become louder and louder each year for Vesemir, until he eventually decided to stop the mutations altogether as the number of young boys taken to the keep fell down to zero. Lambert was amongst one of the last groups of witchers ever trained at Kaer Morhen. The school was still able to produce new witchers, but they had just stopped, as the suffering became too much and no new children arrived in the keep for years. That was at least until Ciri was brought to the keep by Geralt. It was pretty quiet most of the time at Kaer Morhen, with only Vesemir staying there all year round and most other witchers that left of the school only visited in the winters. It left the keep vulnerable, and with invaluable mutagens and witcher secrets still hidden inside the keep, it would become an attractive target to the criminal organization Salamandra. The attack of Salamandra, while not as deadly as the attack that happened a century earlier, still left one witcher dead, as the intruders took off with the mutations. It was a bleak reminder that there were still people out there against the witchers and Kaer Morhen wasn't safe from any attacks. The keep was already falling apart and the attack of Salamandra only made things worse with a new hole being made in the wall as well as damage to several other walls, gates and towers. It was clear that things were already deteriorating over the years. The upkeep of the fortress was falling short. Monsters started to make their way further down the valley and control seemed to slip through the witcher's fingers. With the attacks on the keep, the loss of life, and the lack of newly trained witchers, the wolf school was slowly fading away, with the final Nilna Coffin being the wild hunt. The attack from the Wild Hunt, when I tried to take Ciri, once again resulted in a lot of damage. To the fortress of Kaer Morhen, but more importantly, Vesemir died in this attack. He had become the soul of Kaer Morhen. To the other witchers, he represented the Wolf School. And with him gone, it seemed like the Wolf School itself also finally joined the others. As Kaer Morhen and the halls they once had called home were all left behind. But let's end this video a bit more optimistic. The Wolf School may have fallen. They may have been attacked over and over again. But there is still hope for a future of the school. A future centered around Eskel. While in the games, he says he's leaving Kaer Morhen and is going to search for another place to winter next year, somewhere south. It seems like he will one day return to take care of Kaer Morhen as it is stated in his journal entry in The Witcher 3. There may be some hope that Eskol continues in the same way Vesemir had once done, training a new generation of witchers to protect the continent from monsters, and to once again revive the school of the wolf. What do you think of the wolf school? Could they start all over again with Eskol? Till the next video. Bye.